Ciao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the Gospel, we would read a memorable moment. On their way to Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked His disciples, Who do you say that I am? Peter rightly answers, You are the Christ. However, when Jesus intimates that he will suffer, P Peter rebukes him. No, Jesus retorts, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Friends, Jesus manifests to us his deep faith in the Father who sent him. His is a faith that surrenders everything to the Father in spite of suffering and death in order to fulfill His mission. He tells us, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. He expects the same faith in His disciples. Is our faith like that of Jesus's? First reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The Word of the Lord.
Second Reading A reading from the book of James What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, You have faith, and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The Word of the Lord. Fruitful Faith Our readings for this Sunday center on the faith of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we just uh, presume that, yeah, he's the Son of God, and uh, we believe in him. But as the incarnate Son of God, he also shows us his own faith, his own faith in the Father who sent him. And it is a fruitful, fruitful faith. In the first reading from Isaiah, we heard one of the uh, hymns called the Suffering Servant Song. This is a prophecy about the Messiah who is to come. And he will come as a meek and a servant who is willing to suffer. And today's first reading focuses on one of those hymns. And we just marvel. This servant is totally open to God's word, listening to God's word in order to proclaim what he has heard. But the reception that the Word of God receives through him was not at all pleasant. He was rebuked. He would even be subjected to physical violence, the type of violence that humiliates the one sent by God. But in all of this, the servant says, I will not resist. I will not hide my face. I will not protect myself. Now, is this a case of uh, someone who just uh, does not have any respect for oneself? Is this a person who even enjoys being beaten up, <laughs> being uh, subjected to suffering? Is this a person who has some sort of uh, malady or uh, mental imbalance for him not to resist, not to resist the opposition being presented to him. Well, people might want to study his, uh, his figure from the psychological point of view. But when we look at his words, the root of all this is his faith in God. The firm faith that God is with him and that God will vindicate him. God is near. God will help him. This is the source of his strength. And he continues his mission. In fact, this faith makes him bold. He even invites those who are against him said, let them come and confront me and let us see how the Lord will be on my side. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a faith that bears fruit. Fruit, fruit in, first in the missioner, in the servant. Unbelievable strength. This is, this is divine strength. You, you cannot find this from mere human capacities. And also, the fruit is, of this faith is, he continues with this mission. 
He does not, he does not shrink from the calling. In the second reading from St. James, ah, we have this invitation. There seems to be some people who say that what is important is faith and not good works. But St. James says, well, faith which does not produce good works is not actually faith. It is a dead faith. So it is nothing. So what type of faith is it? that does not influence your mind, your heart, your hands, your persons in terms of doing good, especially to those who are in need. You see a person who is hungry. You see a person who is naked. And you claim you have faith. If your faith does not allow you to be moved, first by compassion, and then move to action to help them, then what type of faith is that? So, St. James is telling us, yes, faith is essential. But faith should not be conceived as something that is just hidden somewhere in you, but does not bear fruit in terms of good works. So, just like the suffering servant in the first reading, St. James challenges those who disagree with him. He says, okay, I will show you my good works that come from my faith. And from my good works, you will see what type of faith I have. My dear brothers and sisters, let us learn from this suffering servant in the first reading and from St. James. Let our faith be fruitful. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord Fruitful faith, the faith that produces fruit, in the first reading, we heard one of the four suffering servant hymns in Isaiah. And we marvel at the uh, meekness, the humility of the servant who in the performance of his mission to proclaim God's word is rebuked, is subjected to humiliation and to violence. But the servant does not resist he receives all of this wholeheartedly. What is the source of this attitude? 
faith. He believes that God was the one who sent him. God does not abandon him. God is with him and God will vindicate him. And so he dares even those who are contrary to him, come, let us see how God will be on my side. Faith gives a missioner strength, inner strength, to withstand all difficulties. And that faith produces one fruit, mission, the continuation of mission. In the second reading, St. James challenges those who say they have faith, but who separate faith from good works. So St. James is questioning that type of faith. If faith in God does not change your mind, your heart, your whole person, in order to be moved, especially by the situation of our poor brothers and sisters, if your faith does not ask, does not produce compassion, if your faith does not move you to help them, then he says that faith is dead. So faith and good works come together. In fact, he says, I will show you my good works and you will see in my good works my faith. In the gospel, we are back to Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that he is? What are people saying about him? And they reported the beautiful and good words, the good impression that Jesus is making on the people. But then he asked them, how about you? You who are my close companions, who do you say that I am? And Peter declared, you are the Christ. You are the anointed one of God. You are the Messiah. You are, in fact, the promised suffering, the, suff the servant promised by the prophecies of old, including the prophecy of Isaiah, the first reading. Now, Jesus explains to them what type of Messiah or Christ he will be. He will be resisted by the elders. He will be arrested. He will be killed. And on the third day, after three days, he will rise from the dead. Now, hearing that, that type of Messiah that Jesus is, Peter comes to him and rebukes him. You know, rebukes Jesus, telling him this should not be the case. And he should not... Uh, uh, present himself as that type of Messiah. But here we see Jesus' faith. He says, Peter, get behind me. No, you are not thinking according to God's thoughts. But you are thinking according to human ways. This is the faith of Jesus. The faith that says, yes, as a human being, this is the way we usually think. This is the way we usually view reality. And this is the way we want ourselves to be. But there is God's way of thinking. And faith allows me to surrender to God's thoughts and God's ways. And by surrendering to God's thoughts and ways, I give up my human ways of thinking. So Jesus shows us his faith. The faith that makes him strong to continue with his mission of salvation. Then comes another point. He tells his disciples, if anyone wants to follow me, then he should do the same thing. Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow Jesus. Meaning, those who want to follow me should have the same faith in God. The same faith that lets go of human ways of thinking in order to embrace God's ways of thinking. Even the mysterious ways that we do not fully understand. And the fruit of that is inner strength, confidence in God, and moving on with one's mission, 
even if it leads to Calvary. My dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, let us open our hearts and review, reflect, how is my faith? Is it similar to Jesus' faith? Is it fruitful in mission and in inner strength? The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Previously, we took note of the two kinds of sharing in the priesthood of Christ. First is through the common priesthood of the faithful, which is given by baptismal grace. The other is through the ministerial priesthood, which happens when a baptized man, having gone through formation, receives the sacrament of holy orders. The priests and bishops are called to minister through teaching God's people, leading the worship of God, and shepherding the community of believers. And because of this distinct character of the ministerial priesthood, Pope Francis has consistently reminded our brother priests to be close to the people and to walk together with them. The Catechism teaches us that ministerial priesthood is meant to be at the service of the common priesthood. In other words, we priests and bishops must not separate ourselves from the faithful, but must journey with them in living our common vocation received in baptism to follow Jesus. Pope Francis further tells us that the grace of being a part of the ministerial priesthood is not for the individual priest or bishop alone, but for the people of God. The invitation and aspiration, then, is to serve the people of God. This is why the example that Jesus gave is always oriented towards service. It is a service to enlighten the people through words that inspire conversion and change. It is a service to heal people of their afflictions, reintegrating them to community life. To Jesus, it is a service to offer oneself a sacrifice so that the people entrusted to His care by the Father may live. Reading the Gospels, we realize that Jesus immersed Himself in the communities He served. He was there in their celebration and desolation. He was there to converse with them and get to know them. He was there in times of crisis. Here we can see that the ministerial priesthood indeed exists within and for the community. That is why in his address to the priests, Pope Francis underlines the contribution of the people of God to our formation and vocation. Jesus' parents contributed to the formation of his character. The boy with fish and bread contributed to his miracle of feeding the 5,000. The bystander participated in his passion by helping him carry his cross. Let us not forget the contribution of the faithful in the fulfillment of our ministry. Let us reflect on the Pope's call to recognize this fact with humility.
We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, take time to contemplate Jesus' faith. Magdaang ka ng oras para pagnilayan ang pananampalataya ni Jesus. The second point is, what aspects of Jesus' faith do you need to deepen in your own faith life? Anong mga bahagi ng buhay pananampalataya ni Jesus na kailangan mong palalimin sa iyong buhay pananampalataya? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as Your Word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, Your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.